I am Daniel Lucas, and welcome to Book 101. Book 101 is all about the books that I read for the last 40 years, and today I have my special guest. He is the author of several books, no other than Mr. Louise Michael Yes. Yes, Daniel, it's a pleasure being here. Thank you so much for having me again. Yes, and welcome back for the first episode that we talk about your novella, is it? Yes. And really interesting. And which book we're going to talk about today? So let's talk about A Silvery Moon, because that's, that's the first book uh, of, my, of my trilogy, of my fantasy trilogy. No, it's the first one. Then there's oh, the, the second first. part and then the third part, right? So it's a so there's a trilogy, but this one is the first one. Sounds interesting. You know, it's the fantasy thing, right? You know, it's fan- fantasy is the home of the trilogy. Definitely. It's like Star Wars. Yes, exactly. <laughs> oh, so Silver Moon, how did you craft it? A silvery moon. So a silvery moon was uh, on a dare, actually. That that was I was working with uh I was working with a colleague, right, uh, in writing, and we were we were we were kind of busy, but it was November and uh, National Novel Writing Month was coming up, right? That's that's Nano Remo in November, and uh, we we challenged each other. You know what? Even though we have so much work, I bet we I, uh, let's bet if we can write a novel. So, yeah, so I got to writing every day, you know, every, every day, you know, posting my progress. Uh, and uh, I didn't finish the novel in November. So in a way, I, I lost. But in, in another way, I ended up finishing the novel after a couple of months and publishing it. So in that way, I, I won because my friend didn't even do that. So I guess so that so. So, yeah, so so that's it. But, but so because of that, it, it's it's a bit it's a bit shorter than the usual fantasy novel. It's, it's not a novella, right? It's, it's still a real novel, still a, 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 a chunky book. But it's not like one of those 500, 700 page monster, right? It, it, it's a bit shorter than that because, you know, that, that was the point. It was part of a competition. So how many days or month you wrote this book? It took me three months, three months to write, right? And, you know, this, it was, again, it was my second book overall. It was my first book in English. So I was still learning a lot. And uh, to the, these days... I think I can write at triple the speed, so that that's much. It's much easier to make books now. But that was yeah, that that that, that was uh, still a bit learning the ropes. A Silvery Moon as a debut novel in English. What is your difficulties in writing with? Well, you know, the the difficulty was more because I was trying to meet that arbitrary deadline, and of course, you know, since it was the first novel in in English, I was learning, I I, I was learning a lot because so I, I've spoken English since I was very young, you know, since 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 I was a kid, I've always been bilingual. But I but there are things about the structure, right? For example, when you write dialogue, right? You know, it, it's different in, in English and in Portuguese. So those are things that that I got wrong at the time. You know, for example, you use in English, you use quotes, right? In, in English, you use double quotes to signal that the character is is, is talking. While as in, in Portuguese, you, you use kind, you use a slash. You 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 use a very long hyphen, like an hyphen that's the, the length of three hyphens. So yeah, so so uh, not like not exactly an M dash, even longer than an M dash. So that's definitely a, a structural a, a structural issue that I ran along. But you know, uh, I was very lucky, right? There was a very good response when I launched the book, and that allowed me to hire an editor, which is Susan, which is uh, a fantastic fantastic editor, and, and you know she. Uh, went through the book and, and and I learned a lot from that first editing pass right so you know I I, I usually I usually joke that there is you know that there's writing before uh, I had an editor and then there's a writing after and just by looking at the, the edits from the from the first book 
and, and now the book is the, the book is completely is is in is in incredibly well shape you know th thanks to me putting all that money and investment and love and getting an editor and now right i i know how to write that much better because i took that feedback and i saw the things that were changed in that book and i'm like okay so now i'm just going to to write like this from the start yes so a uh, silver moon as a debut novel what did you learn from it yeah so i i i learned to I instead of worrying a lot uh, about having it all figured out you know from beginning to end i learned to just let things breathe and 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 write and have fun writing and, and you know that things would work out as the more time i invested so there was never a part in writing a silvery moon where i got stuck in, in trying to figure out what happens next i i was just having fun and it, it, it's a bit like role playing you know I, i have these characters in my head and i put them together in a situation and then instead of trying to come up in place for them to just you know move the story along i just kind of let them figure it out right i'm uh i have these characters in a situation and i'm like okay these are the kind of people that they are what would they do in this situation and that kind of organically uh, brought the, the their actions and the story moving ahead so a silvery moon mean to say you love writing it i did it was so much fun and and you know the biggest all the books obviously you know people read because they want to have fun right that that's that's uh, well maybe you not know, maybe sometimes they want to be scared as well or, or feel other emotions but i feel that mostly people want to have fun right right read. you think that's fair to say you've interviewed a lot of people what do you think is the main thing people read they love horror they love science fiction fantasy yeah just like andy palakin the same genre the amazon bestseller I it's great super fun And th that's what I mean, right? You know, and, and these books, they're just fun to read. And I think that, I think that's at least what I try to do. I try to have fun writing so that people will have fun reading. And uh, this is my book where the word fun shows up the most in the reviews. There's a lot of people saying, this book is kind of short, but it's just so much fun. So that, that made me very happy. Yes. Definitely. So if you describe this book in five adjectives, what are they? Oh, wow. That, that's, I was not prepared for that. Let, let me know. Well, one is easy fun, right? That, <laughs> that, that, that already can come. But I would say adventurous, right? Mysterious, somewhat mysterious, because the, the premise of the book is that there is a, there is a mystery, right even though it's an event uh, even though it's a fantasy book we're usually in fantasy books uh, uh, right at the beginning uh, there is a, a, a set antagonist right and and that's not the case on this one in this one the the character the main character lucius the monster hunting priest arrives at the village you know to meet someone and the person is dead uh, so there's the mystery of why was the person that he was going to meet you know, murdered, how, how they died. So, so he's, so there's actually a bit of mysterious to it. So adventurous, mysterious, fun. Okay. Uh, what else can I, fast, fast, right? This is a very fast paced novel, pulpy, right? Fast and pulpy. So those are my last two, uh, two, two, eject, uh, two adjectives, right? The, this, this uh, has a lot of action, a lot of action scenes, a, a lot of things happening, you know, very fast. It's, it's very adventurous, very fast and action packed. I don't think that you will, I, I don't think that, <laughs> I don't think that anyone who picks it up will uh, put it down very easily, if, if I may say so. That, that sounds a bit, <laughs> that sounds a bit conceited, right? But I, I think it's true. Yes, definitely. So do you think A Silver Moon is good for a series or for a motion picture? Yeah, oh, definitely. I, I mean, that's, look, that, that is some of the comments that I've gotten is that, you know, uh, I can't wait for the movie, right? That is, that, <laughs> that is, one, of my, that, that is one of the reviews. It, it just flows very well. 
right? I actually had uh, interest in uh, a, a couple of of uh, a couple of of series and movies. People, you know, from South America. We've had some talks because they they were interested in adapting it. But you know, that business is a tough business. You know, so at the end of the day, it, it, it's a lot of projects are considered, but not a lot get the green light. So this was not the time to adapt the Silvery Moon uh, for any screen, but there's definitely been, you know, it's that it's definitely uh, the kind of book that could easily, that, that people could easily do that with it. So there's been interest in the past. Why the title is A Silvery Moon? Well, because, so in my fantasy world, uh, Elysia, specifically in the Northern region, the, the religion is a, a dual religion right of with two opposing goddesses it's a bit like the yin yang and one is, is the daughter of the ice that that represents the cold and that and and those kinds of you know and hardships which is are very characteristic you know to 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 northern lands right because they're hard places to live and then the second one is the lady of the pines and the silvery moon which is, you know, because it's the pines, the forests that give the life, etc. And, and the silvery moon, because the silvery moon is what cuts through the darkness, right? You know, if you don't have fire available, you know, what's the safest night to be out in an inhospitable land? It's the full moon, right? The full moon with, with light that, that shines like silver. So it's called the silvery moon because the main character in the book It's a monster hunter and the priest for that faith. So he, he is he is able to cast magic with the blessing of the goddess of the silvery moon. So if you have the second title option, hmm. what is it? The second title option. Hmm. Huh, that's hard, right? I I, I wonder. I, I think that I had a working title for the book that was different, but it's been so long ago, right? This book, I published it in 2019. I, I guess that, that's something like Mystery in the Mountain Town, but that doesn't seem like a fantasy title, right? <laughs> <laughs> so do you think that Silver yeah. Moon is really suitable for the book? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it definitely it definitely is, right? It, it, it showed, there, there is a lot of themes. Uh, there, there's a big team of, of the of, of some. There's a character that finds their fate in the goddess. There's a character that that loses a bit of that fate, a, a, and eventually, you know, the magic of the silvery moon is a crucial part of the plot. So yeah, th definitely, yeah, it, it's it's a it's a it's a good title for that. Okay, a silver moon. Let's go to the reviews of your reader. Uh, let's see what they say about. Years. This is my most reviewed book, by the way. Oh, yeah. So that's awesome. that's, yeah. Let's, let's talk about it. But before we go on, I'm inviting you to listen to my other podcast, Food 101, our third season with Chef Alessandro, one of the executive chefs in downtown Toronto and one of the five-star hotel. And my latest episode for Miss Halloween. Please do listen to that. She is one of the CEO of Ubli. And you need to listen because it's one of a kind breakthrough that help our uh, health crisis like diabetes and uh, obesity. So please do check Food 101. So according to Miss Jan says, from Canada you said you have a lot of reviews from coming from Canada right yeah it, yeah it says good read oh interesting tale about vampires holding a town in a thrall yeah wow that's a bit of a spoiler though spoiler alert <laughs> <laughs> spoiler alert people we yes. don't want you to, to spoil you but it comes out to the uh, <laughs> review <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. According to Albert, an excellent first effort in by Louis Magalhães, with a fast pace and much better quality writing than 80% of the self pub stuff on Amazon. How does it feel? <laughs> It's great. It's well, I worked hard for it. And by the way, that that that, that review, right? Again, this this book, it has been. 
I've poured a lot of love in this book. This book is in its third edition now, right? The the first one, the, the, the when I first launched it, there was a lot of problems, right? Because I was still learning, but it was such a good story that I've kept investing and making it better and etc. Right? Because and, and look, th that's just the way it has to be. Because if people find my new book, let's say that I launch, let's say the book that I launched last month, people go and read it. They think, hey, it's a great book. I love that. Let's go and read uh, Luis's first book, right? If they get there and then they see that the book is terrible, that's not good. So, you know, I, I, I try to always make sure that my old books are up to the quality of my newest book. Ah, oh, that'd be awesome. So, as you said, you learn a lot from your uh, debut novel in English. Yeah. Yes, for sure. And one of your readers says, great book, very entertaining book filled with charismatic characters. Also, what are the charismatic characters that you input in your story? Oh, yeah. So, so of course, there, there's Lucia, who is the, the priest, the priest of the Silvery Moon. Um, he's a monster. He, he is a lone monster hunter, but he can't stay alone for very long because there's a lot of, uh, there's a lot of creatures trying to kill him. So he finds two allies, right? One is a, a girl that is native to that, uh, to that mountain town. She is Donata La France, and she is a huntress. And then there's Oscar Offritz. Oscar Offritz, he is uh, an old retired marksman that he's now a business guy. He, he holds a mine in, in, in the outskirts of town, but the mine stopped working, right? It's a copper mine and they stopped working. It just went to a standstill. His workers don't want to work anymore. And he, he goes to the town to find out why. And uh, he finds out that the reason they don't want to is that they believe the mind is haunted. So then he goes to ask the priest for help, and that's part of that. That's basically the how this. That's basically how the story begins. So so yeah. So so there's a, a very young character. It's kind of a coming of age story for Donata. Uh, there's Lucius, who, who is the the main character and and the hero with special powers, right? But he does also have a bit of a dark secret that I'm not going to spoil, but he has a bit of a trauma issue going on, right? So I'm not going to spoil what I'm not going to spoil what that is, but you you learn about it, you know, if you read the book. And, and then you have Oscar, which is a more world weary character, right? But but very good woman, very very witty. That that you know, the initial impression is that he only cares about his business, but you know quickly you understand that he's really a bit of a softy. Yes, and according to um, Monica, good reading, good book full of fantasy and magic. Okay, so what fantasy and magic that you encrafted to to the story? Yeah, so well, it, it it's in a. Uh, it's set in Alessia, right? My my fantasy, my, my fantasy universe, and, and this is actually set in a time where magic is slowly returning to Alessia. So I started Alessia as a very uh, low magic place, and then started a, 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 a story arc about magic returning to it. And now th this is this is when a bit of the magic is already returning to Alessia. Uh, there's a lot of magic that Lucius the priest does when he summons the power of the silvery moon, right? He can, you know, weaken monsters, weaken the people of darkness. He can cast light where there was once only shadow and he can, he can bless weapons and he can even summon weapons made of moonlight, right? So he, th there's a lot of uh, useful, right, magic in the book, but there's also, you know, a, a less less obvious you know let's less direct man magic just in a way that that you can sense stuff from around it and and also in, in the way that the the villains right operate and use magic to keep the population of the village in troll but again i'm not going to go too much into that because it, it, it's more interesting if the reader discovers it and and of course there's the beasts right there's the monsters 
Uh, the monsters in this book, you know, the previous reviewer mentioned, you know, vampires. And, you know, there is one vampire, right, in the book. But there are also other monsters. And they're all very dark creatures. They're a bit darker than the usual fantasy book, just because the tone of this book turned out to be a little bit uh, darker. So, you know, people are usually you, you uh, are, are usually used to trolls and orcs and goblins and, 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 and stuff like that. But, but here, here, here the monsters are a bit darker than that. Yes, very well said. And according to A&M, a classic fantasy, and uh, uh, he's saying that I noticed that some other reviews of a silvery moon criticize it for being too much like the lord of the rings first and he said firstly this is nonsense so what do you comment on that well i i, I mean so there's i i don't i don't resent being compared to lord of the rings because you know it, it's it's one of my favorite trilogies of all time so that's not a bad that's not a bad thing to be compared to Right, but I, I think that it's similar to Lord of the Rings, in, in just really in the sense that there are you know a, a bunch of people that get together to go on a on a quest, right, on on, on a mountain. But uh, so structurally, it might be a bit similar. But you know, there's not there's no, for example, there's no elves in this book. There's no uh, dark lord in a faraway land that you have to defeat. So I I don't I, I mean the comparison could be apt just as a you know generic you know i all fantasies have a little bit of of lord of the rings but i, I do think that it's a fairly unique and more pulpy you know read than 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 what what tolkien did which is again you know i, I love tolkien it's it's he is one of my literary heroes but that was not what i tried to do here right i i was trying to write a pulpy thing, right? It's something that was fast-paced and very fun to read quickly. So do you think there's a little bit um, writing of Tolkien on your classic fantasy, Silvery Moon? Well, you know, that it's it's when you write fantasy, Tolkien did so much <laughs> to, to establish the genre, right? That it's, al that, that it's always a little bit hard to say that there's no Tolkien here, right? <laughs> so that that's that is definitely very that that is definitely very difficult. I mean, if if you look hard enough, you can find a little bit of Tolkien in any fantasy book, right? Yes, and uh, according to you know, it's well written. As I said, oh wow, that's really amazing. And according to uh, Lee's outstanding vampire fantasy read yeah so how so how did you incorporate uh vampire and magic and uh all this stuff in the story yeah so so that is it i i some people have said that it's a vampire book and to me that's very interesting because i didn't write it as a vampire book i just wrote it as a fantasy adventure and, and it happens that one of the bad guys is a vampire in this case you know bad ladies right there's a villain in the book that that is a vampire, and for some reason, right? I guess people gravitated toward that. Uh, but 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 yeah, it's look back in Dungeons and Dragons, right? If if you if you think about when I was when I was younger and I played Dungeons and Dragons with my friends and I read the books that were inspired in Dungeons and Dragons like the Forgotten Realm books, right? A, a vampire was just a, a creature in those worlds, right? There wasn't anything special. You know, it was like there were dragons and there were goblins and there were trolls and there were uh, undead sorcerers and there were vampires, right? It, it was just one more thing to, one more kind of, one more type of, of villain that you could use in your stories. So I, I think that it's more that today we kind of see vampires in the book and we say it's a vampire book. But it used to be that the vampire was a common antagonist in fantasy books, right? So I, I guess that in that way, that's because I try to write uh, in a bit in the, and again, that there's the Tolkien comparison again. Uh, I want to write classical fantasy, right? I try my books to not be, I try to write my books in a way that they're not, they don't sound too modern. I, I like to feel 
that I'm writing in the style of the classics, uh, of the fantasy classics. So I guess that's also a bit of that, right? Yes, definitely. And according to Spotlight Reviews, a unique group of monsters and hunters. There is definitely monster hunting. For <laughs> sure. If you describe your villain, is it the same highlight that you put in the main character? So I, I I wouldn't say again because it's part of the part of the story, right? Is about the heroes finding out together with the, the readers, you know, about the villains. So because of that, I can't do the thing that I usually like to do, which is write from the village from the villains' perspective and, and, and flesh them out a little bit more. Now that happens in the sequel, right? You know, because the mystery is solved. We know who the bad person is. We, we know who the villain is. So then, you know, once I get to the sequel, which is called Mask of the Eternal Moon, once I get to the sequel, then I, I, I start exploring a bit more the villain's point of view. And, and, yeah, and, and then, you know, there's a twist between book two and book three. By the way, the, the trilogy is finished, right? The trilogy I finished, the last book in the trilogy wa was uh, launched l in December last year. So it's going to be three months now. And, uh, and, and, and yeah, it's, uh, it's a great story. I, I hope people will, tr will try it out. Yes, people, let's support um, Mr. Luis Magalias because this epic fantasy is one of a kind. So before we go on, Mr. Luis, I want to shout out to the people listening in Kenya. Thank you, Kenya. I always on the top 50 on Apple chart. So in mm -hmm. Nairobi, yes, I got 51% audience share. In Nairobi province, I get 45%. Mombasa district, I have 2%. Nakura district at 1%. And Kisi district at 1%. So thank you for supporting this podcast because this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world like Mr. Luis Magalias. So Mr. Luis, what is the best highlight of Silver Moon? The best highlight of Silvery Moon. Well, I am. So I, I, I'm. Uh, I, I'm very big on on starting with spectacle and ending with spectacle. So my books almost always start with action, and I really like the beginning action scene that I started this movie. This, this book. This book starts right. This book starts with one of the characters. Uh, in the woods, fleeing from a deadly monster, and uh, that's always a fun. That that's always fun. So I would say that that is definitely one of the highlights. And then you know the final battle. The final battle is is as epic as I could absolutely make it, and uh, I think that people who read it will enjoy it. By the way, uh, because you are you are so nice, Daniel, and you made a real effort to to be here at 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 and record this at a time that I know is hard for you, but you made it happen for me. I actually have a gift for your listeners. Oh, so, yes. Go ahead. If your listeners go to l.elicia.net slash book 101, they can get my short story collection for free. It's a real book that's up for sale on Amazon, but if they go to l.elicia.net slash book 101, and I'll give you the link so you can put it in the show notes, right? They can get it. They can get the digital version, right? For free for their, and, and it's, a, it's a collection of six short stories. So it's kind of a big book. And two of the short stories feature Lucius, the, the hero of A Silvery Moon. So they, they can try out my writing style, you know, it, and it's it, this link is just for your audience. Yes. Thank you so much, Mr. Louise. And we, we're going to feature all your books uh, on Book 101 Review. Okay. And thank you so much for that. So if you go back and revise A Silver Moon, which part of the book you want to revise? Well, actually nothing, because I already revised it three times, remember? <laughs> it's, it's enough. It's good. It's, it's great. Enough. 
<laughs> yes. <laughs> Three times is good. It's uh, look, I'm really proud. I'm really proud of the book. It, it it's kind. Of, it, it grew with me, right? It 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 grew with me as a writer. So we, it, it's although even though it's my first my my first book in English, it's as good as the last one, really. Yes. So yeah. let's say one of the producer or a movie producer want you to revise something in the book. Would you agree? Want to do what? Sorry. To revise some of the chapter of the silver sure. moon. Sure. That that's that. Look, that that's just being a professional, right? That that's what you do. It's you know a, a book and a TV series as a movie. They're different things, and sometimes they need. Things need to be changed, right? I, I say, you know, go for it. As long as you pay me the rights, of course. Don't change it without paying me. But please go for it. <laughs> <laughs> yes. A silver moon. What do you think the flaws of the book? Well, that's hard, right? That, 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 it, it, it's, it's hard to point to the flaw. You know, if I was going to, if I was going to write it anew, this is not something that I can do a revision on right i would probably make it a bit longer i would probably add you know some extra scenes before right showing out two of the characters meet right and, and something like that uh ju just to make it a, a little big because i think that a lot of people judge the books by the length and uh, I was raised reading huge books like Tolkien's, but also smaller books like Robert E. Howard's. And uh, so I think that length shouldn't be how you judge a book. But these days, people do judge a book a bit for its length. And I, I'm very sad that some people haven't given the book a chance just because it, it's like 140 pages, right? So that, that, that I, I, I think that... If I could magically change something, I would probably change that. So do you think in the future, if you're writing a novel, you will incorporate that uh, thing? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm definitely making all of the so the all of the books, even the 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 sequel, Mask of Eternal Moon, and, and the the third part of the trilogy. Uh, a sundered moon they're three times as large right I, I definitely took the reader feedback and decided okay well now I'm not doing a competition I'm not you know writing this you know to to beat my friend so I'm going to I, I'm not going to be doing cuts I'm going to write the, the the expected size for a fantasy novel so yeah all of my other books are larger this is my smallest book this is my smallest book do you think a silver moon will be expandable? I don't think so. I mean, that's, I mean, it, it, I expanded it with the sequels, of course, right? But just making it larger, like I said, if I had a magic way to do it, I would. But just if, but doing it with actual work, with actually sitting down and, and writing, I don't think it would look good. I, I think it would feel like I was bloating it artificially. Do you, do you understand what I mean? Yes. So you are satisfied of the whole concept of trilogy. Yeah, yeah, that that is good. And you know, uh, I fantasy is the home of the trilogies, right? The, the, there's this joke. It's not me. I'm not judging anyone. I didn't make up the joke. That's the joke that that, that, that it's told. That if you if you write a book, you're an author. But if you want to be a, a fantasy author, you need to write three books. Right. Oh, so, so yes. that's the joke. <laughs> that, so, so that's the joke. And, and, and yeah, I, I, I was happy to finish the trilogy. I, I love doing it. Uh, I love this trilogy to this day. But, you know, uh, and, and now I'm moving on. And I've, I've, uh, and I think that maybe the next one won't be part of a trilogy. Maybe it will be part of a kindet. Right. So that's going to be six, five or six books, even maybe. Right the the next the the next series so it just keeps growing for the following week we're gonna talk about your uh, mass of eternal moon and the sundered moon so how did you connect uh this book in one uh, with a spoiler alert people but yeah <laughs> uh, we want to know how did you connect well, it i can book? actually do it without spoilers right so um 
at the end of a silvery moon the 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 the, the, the bad the bad person is defeated but lives to fight another day escapes so the book two mask of the eternal moon is the villain trying to make their villainous plan work while the heroes are hunting the villain so so that's so that's the connection between the two books and, and then you know at the end of that book what do you think happens because <laughs> there's a book three so maybe they don't necessarily succeed that all that they wanted to do yes that be awesome and sounds interesting we need to read this book because it's one of a kind and i think it's good for a movie or a series <laughs> don't you think i hope so right people have expressed interest in making it into a movie or maybe a short feature so you know maybe it will happen one day i hope so yes a uh, shout out to the people listening to us <laughs> Yeah. from uh, Netflix or Amazon. Uh, let's support Mr. Luis Magoyas because all the books that he's producing is one of a kind so that Mr. Luis will continue the journey of writing. Mr. Luis, can you please invite our listeners to buy all your books? Of course, please. Go ahead. Go ahead. You can find them just searching Amazon, right, for, for my name or for Legends of Elysia. And uh, also, you know, A Silvery Moon also will also get you to the book. And of course, you know, follow the link that, that, I, that, that, uh, that Daniel will put in the show and you can find my books. It, it's, look, my, I'm building a fantasy series, a fantasy universe, right? Several series set in the same universe. Uh, a Silvery Moon is the first of a trilogy, right? And the trilogy is complete. Now I'm starting to write a new series of books, but still in, in Alessia, still in the same universe. So if it, you can start anywhere you like and you'll, you'll find continuity. It's a, it's a world that I plan to be playing in for many, many years to come. Is there a trademark that you can recognize? Oh, this is from Mr. Louise. Just like Star Wars, the force may be with you. Yeah, I think that I I think that I have a unique pace, right? Uh, I like I said, even even when I write longer books, I try to make the the chapters short and punchy. You know, that was that was an advice from Mr. Andy, by the way, which I took. Right. So, yeah, uh, your your previous guest, Andy Peloquin, right. That was I he he we talked about it on Twitter and I was like Andy was like saying, you know, you should, short, punchy characters allow people to to not let go of your of your book. And I'm like, yeah, Andy has a point. Let's do that. <laughs> so definitely, so I've definitely changed my writing to to suit that and, and uh, my books are very fast paced, right? You, it, it's, you know, you'll be glad when you finish a chapter because it's an opportunity for you to take a break because it will be very hard for you to stop in the middle of a, of a chapter. Yes, Mr. Andy Palkin will be my guest in first week of April again because I think he's just busy, busy. I, as I said, this podcast is created to empower writers all over the world, most especially in the publishing. So, Mr. Lewis, as as an uh, indie author, what is your advice for the people aspiring to publish their book? Yeah, well, my advice is to write every day. I know it's tired advice. I know everyone gives it out, but it's still the best thing, right? And, and don't be afraid. Don't be self-conscious, you know? Uh, a bad book can eventually be turned into a good book, you know, with, with effort and investment and, 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 and care. But a book that is never out there, You'll never know if it's not if it's bad or good. You know, you, you'll never get feedback from readers. You'll never never get feedback from fellow authors, etc. It, it's you know, write every day and get it out there. And, and if people say that it's terrible, which people won't, because as you as you're writing a book, when you finish writing a book, you know so much more about writing than when you started writing the book that you'll be able to tell if you need to go back and change things to make it better. Right. 
So I, I actually, if you really care about what you're doing, I don't think that you put a terrible book out there. But, you know, certainly there will be stuff that you're blind to just because when we're so committed to doing something, we, we it, it, it's like, you know, it's like typos, you know, why do you get an editor or a proofreader to read your book? Because you're so familiar with it that you already skip the typos, right? You, you don't, you, you, you don't even see them. So, you know, pay attention to the feedback, get it out there, see what people think, right? Don't, you'll get negative feedback and you'll get positive feedback, you know, the positive feedback, enjoy it. And the negative feedback, you know, don't take it personally, you know, see if there's something that you can learn from it. If there's something you can learn from it, learn it and then let it go. And if there's nothing you can learn for it, just, you know, just pretend you didn't see it, I guess. <laughs> yes, definitely. So do you think that negative reviews or rejection make you perfect or make you better in the process? Some do, right? You know, sometimes you get a negative review that points out something that, that points out something important, right? Uh, and that's and you learn from it. And then some negative reviews are just people that didn't like the book, and that's fine, right? People are allowed not to like things. Definitely, they are free to uh, say their opinion because yes. people like to give their opinions, either good or yeah. bad. <laughs> exactly right i i, I mean may, maybe someone doesn't like vampires in their fantasy in their fantasy fiction right you know the, so they'll they leave a bad review what can i do with that not a lot i can respect that yeah sure i understand where you're coming from you don't like vampires in your fantasy on your fantasy books yes a fuck are. right this this book had a vampire in it well you know i'm sorry you didn't like it you know, you paid for it. Thank you for the purchase. And you left a bad review. I understand where you're coming from. There's the, no hard feelings, right? You buy the book, you're, you're, you're entitled to leave a review. Yes. So once again, let's support Mr. Luis Magalias because the books are phenomenal and one of a kind. And I hope sooner or later this will be a series or a motion picture to help Mr. Luis. So, Mr. Lubis, thank you for your time. No, thank you, Daniel. It was very kind of you to make the time for me. So, thank you. Again and again, invite our listeners to buy your books. Yeah, please go check out Amazon for Legends of Alicia. Check out uh, A Silvery Moon, Mask of the Eternal Moon, A Sundered Moon. Check out also my latest release, which is the start of the new series, but still in the Legends of Elysia universe, uh, The Daughter of the Ice. And, you know, if again, if you want to uh, try before you buy, if you want to see if you like my writing, you, you can get uh, a free sampling of short stories by going to l.elysia.net slash book 101 and you know uh, the, daniel will include the link in the show notes and there's also the free novella we discussed on the other show on the on last show last time i was in this show which is flight of the necromancer it's available on amazon for free and also on other ebook platforms apple etc etc so you know check it out you, you can try before you buy so one more question, Mr. Luis. What is the difference of your writing between you and Mr. Andy Palaquin? Oh, that that that, that takes a long time. That that would take that is a question. <laughs> that is, we we write completely different styles, right? In fantasy, right? And Andy is and for starters, Andy writes much longer books. Andy is uh, uh, writes beautiful, beautiful, gritty descriptions. Very, very, very long, very intricate flight uh, fight scenes. It, 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 it's a, it's a very different it's a very different style of writing, right? And, and he also writes much more darker fantasy than me. My fantasy, even though this is a little bit darker book, right? With but it, it's it's not dark fantasy. It's still you know regular high fantasy. Uh, Andy writes really dark fantasy, so. That that mm -hmm. so, so that's a bit so that's a big difference. But hey, I, I I've read his books. They're awesome. I, I'm a I'm a fan. I'm a, I'm a big fan. Right. I, I like varying my. I don't only like you know. I don't. I like reading books like mine. I, I read <laughs> I read a lot of books like mine. But in I like trying the different kinds of fantasy. Right. 
Fantasy yes. is a is a very big fantasy is a very broad genre with many subgenres, and, and I like to try the the different ones. Yes, thank you, Mr. Luis. Bodycon people, see you soon. Can I?